Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the fifth lecture of chapter 11. And in this lecture, we're going to show that central forces are conservative and drive the expression for the total energy. All right, central force fields are conservative. So we need to find a scalar valued function whose gradient, negative gradient, is equal to the force. All right, so the, also the equivalent we saw earlier is to show that the work done by the force field in moving a particle from one point to another is independent of the path taken to go from one point, that one point to another. It, that is, it only depends on the endpoints. Now that will be true if the integrand for the work integral, f dot dr, is minus dv, the, the total differential of the potential energy function. All right, well, let's just write this down. f dot dr is this expression here, f of r, position vector divided by its magnitude dot dr. Now, this expression here, r dot dr, reduces to f of r dr. We know it's a scalar. How do you prove that? Well, you need that little vector identity. r dot dr is r dr. If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. But you can prove it by noting that r dot r is r squared, then computing the differential, and it falls out easily. So we have shown that minus dv is f of r dr, and the potential is pretty easy. Potential is just a function of r, one variable in this case, the magnitude of the, ve the position vector. We don't worry about constants yet because we know we can change the value of the potential by a constant, and, uh, and that is the limits of integration. And that's OK. That doesn't change the force or anything like that. But choosing a judicious choice for a constant can make computations easier. All right, we have the potential energy for the central force field. Now let's derive the total energy. There are two ways to do this. We can derive the velocity. We know what that is in polar coordinates. V dot V, velocity squared, is this expression. And so kinetic plus potential energy equals constant. It's this expression here. And you can differentiate it with respect to time and verify that it is a constant. Now, this is uh, the total energy in polar coordinates for a particle moving in a central force field. Now, the second method deals more directly with the equations of motion. So let's go back. these equations of motion, we multiply the first equation by r, the second equation by r theta dot, and we add them together. And it looks like it's going to be a mess. So that's what I've said right here. We add them together, and using the definition of the potential and differentiating it to get the force. We lump terms together, a little bit of algebra is required, and we get exactly the same expression for the energy. Now this has a, this maybe is a little more satisfying. It came directly from the equations of motion and you differentiating them with respect to time will give you a constant very naturally. Okay. So 
So you integrate both sides of this equation with respect to time, and you get what I just said, a constant. Okay, so two ways for, de for deriving the expression of total energy. The message is motion in a central force field is conservative, and we have a total energy function, and we can, we've written it in polar coordinates. Okay, that's, that's it for chapter 11 and all the material in the course. So in the final lecture, I'm going to talk about the problems at the end of this chapter 11. So see you next time. Bye.